Have you ever tried to use your math skills to integrate with the design of your project? In this tutorial I will show you how to create three towers that complement each other based on parametricism and trigonometry. Without further ado, let's get started. Hi guys, Lazar here. And this tutorial is inspired by the Project Ternari Tower designed by Hyria Attack Studio. So first we are going to start with a point, create the vertical line, divide the line into multiple segments and at each segment we are going to create uh, uh, this shape. Once we create a single tower we will uh, find the position of the other two. So first I'm going to create a point and this point I will set somewhere in the Rhino viewport. After that I will take component as the align direction of the line will be z direction because i want to create a vertical line and let's uh, create a slider and the height um, i will set the height 220 once you create the vertical line i will divide the line into uh, segments so there is component divide curve and i'm going to divide into let's say uh, let's say four segments. I will open the picture once again So you can see that each segments represent uh, one period of the cosine curve So at each segment we will have a single period and let's say this is one one element second third and fourth element uh, once we create division points we need to divide this um, vertical line for that i will use component shatter and the input will be the curve parameter that we get from the divide curve the curve that we want to divide it is the vertical line and if we connect a panel you can see that we have four lines once we get uh, four segments uh, i'm going to divide them using uh, divide curve once again and I will create a slider from 1 to 60 and the number of divisions I want to be uh, divided by 3. Uh, I will explain later on why but instead of placing uh, the slider which is divided by 3 we can uh, use component modulus and component modulus will give us integer number which is a leftover from divisions of these two numbers. So I want to uh, get number divided by 3, so that's why I will place number 3 in the B, in the modules. And uh, the number 43 divided by 3 can be disassembled into 42 divided by 3 plus 1 third. Here we get an integer number, which is 14 plus 1 third. In the modulus output will always get that number which is left over from the integer division or from the integer number that we get once we disassemble input so in this case output r will be one and let's check it so in order to get uh, the number which is divided by three we can use subtraction and we can simply uh, subtract um, 43 with 1 and here we get the number 42 if I place 42 once again we'll get the number 42 but if I place 45 which is divided by 3 the result will be 45 okay and I will place in the end which means we'll get 45 divisions at each line these numbers will be the center of the circles placed on xy plane but now we need to create the radius of these circles and the radius will be based on the cosine wave so here i placed a cosine wave in the image sample uh, to explain how we can uh, get these numbers so you can see that we can take only this um, domain from minus pi to pi so only this segment of the cosine wave and based on these values 
we can remap them into values that we want to um, have for the uh, circle radius. So uh, this is a single period and this is the period that we're going to apply to each um, to each segment. So first I'm going to create a domain domain construct. So the start of a domain will be minus pi. So I'll use a negative. And the end of domain will be pi. So here we have from minus pi to pi. And these numbers I will place in the component cosine. Once you place, we'll get the numbers from minus one to one. So how it works, at this point, at minus pi, the, the value is minus one. At zero, the value is one. And after that, once again, uh, for the value pi, the cosine value is minus one. So uh, basically we'll get values here uh, from, from minus one to one. And, and after that, once again, to minus one. Okay, so I will use range and the domain will be from uh, minus pi to pi and the number of divisions should be equal to the number of points that we have, which in our case is 45. All right, once we get uh, these values from minus pi to pi, I'm going to place it in the cosine and you can see that we'll get values from minus one to 0 0.5, then to one, almost one in our case, and after that to minus one. These values I will remap into a new uh, target domain. So um, first we need to set source domain and the target domain, so construct domain. Target domain can be from, from 5 to, let's say, 17. And once we get these values, so you can see that we have a single branch. Inside uh, this branch, we have 46 values. And here we get four branches inside each branch, 46 values. Okay, and I will take this and place in the R input. As a result, we get uh, circles positioned on XY planes along initial vertical line. In the next step, I will take all circles and place in the same list with the flattened component because we have overlap uh, circles. So in order to remove them, uh, I will place them in the same list, find the middle point of each uh, circle. And there is component cal duplicates. These points I will place in the P, leave one, and in the I output, we have index numbers um, that left. So I will take a list item. And these indices I will use as uh, index numbers of the base list. So you can see that here we get 181 circle and here we have 184 so three circles are removed from this list and once we get these circles we can create a surface so basically here we can set how many uh, segments we want along um, initial vertical line and here we can set minimum and the maximum um, circle radius. Okay, this is just for the better understanding how the surface would look like, but um, we're not going to create surface now. I will take uh, the circles and I want to extend uh, the geometry um, on, the, on the top and on the bottom. So I want to have 
this little extension, something like this. So for that, I will take um, the item with the index zero and with the index minus one. Minus one is the last item in the list. So I will take first a list item and in the I, I will place zero. And, oh, sorry. Okay, we can delete this part. And we can take um, panel and type minus one. So you can see that here we selected uh, the last item in the list. So the circle on the top and here we selected circle on the bottom. All right, now I'm going to move them. So one circle will be moved along minus Z direction. Another one will be moved along um, Z direction. So the one on the top will be moved along Z. So I will use component move. And here um, I will type for how much we want to move the circle on the top. But if you have a different scale, you would every time you would need to um, adjust this slider. So to prevent that, uh, we can take uh, the length of a single item. So one of the segments. So let's take uh, the first segment. And we can calculate the length. And based on the length, we're going to move these two guides along positive and negative Z direction. So here we have the length of uh, the first segment. And we can say, uh, let's apply the amplitude for the Z, which is equivalent to the, let's say, sixth of the length of the segment. So we place here number six in division B input. And the number that we get here is 9.16667. And this number I will place uh, in the Z F input, and the same uh, the same amplitude we're going to use, but the vector will be reversed. Okay, so you can see based on uh, this slider, we can move um, these two circles. Okay. In the next step, I'm going to use component entwine. So the circle on the bottom will be placed in the branch zero. In the branch one, I will place the list of circles that we get from the uh, call duplicates and platform component. So I will move all of them up. And in the branch two, I will place the, the circle on the top that we move along Z direction. Okay, and uh, once again, we can create the loft just to see how it looks, but don't forget to flatten the list. Okay, and uh, basically with this slider, you can see how we extend the initial uh, surface on the top and on the bottom. Once we finish with the geometry of the first tower, we need to find the position of the other two. So. Uh, let's open the image once again. So now we need to find the vertical position of the other two towers. So let's say uh, here we have the uh, the segment. So this is a one segment. And let's use the line. Or this is a single period of uh, cosine curve that we uh, define. And you can see using uh, this segment, the shape is multiplied along uh, that direction. But this segment, so this length here, this length, uh, if we divide on three divisions, uh, these three divisions represent the starting vertical position of the other towers. So. This is the starting position of the left tower of this one. And you can see if uh, it starts here, it uh, ends somewhere here. So the difference 
uh, between the main one and one on the left is the third uh, the height of, of a single segment and the tower on the right starts with the two third of the of the length of a segment so the tower on the left starts uh, if we take the length and divide by three and the tower on the right uh, uh, the segment starts if we take the length and divide by two thirds and it starts here so the vertical position on the left is one third and the position of the right is two thirds so first uh, let's create the tower on the left so i'm going to take the list of circles before we added the one on the bottom and on the top so using uh, this list of circles i will extract the uh, start and the end point of the lines and i'm going to create interpolate curve based on the starting point all right once we create starting point i'm going to uh, move this line along z direction so move z direction will be the vector and the amplitude of the vector will be one third of the length of the segment so instead of using one sixth i will use one third and this will be the amplitude okay but now we need to position uh, the tower on the on the right so once you move along one third of the length of the segment uh, we need to take uh, on this curve actually we need to take um, uh, these two curves and i want to find the intersection point this intersection point i will use to create uh, uh, the plane mirror plane so this will be the origin of mirror plane along uh, uh, y uh, z plane so what we need to do first we need to find the intersection between these two curves once we find the intersection points i will extract the one uh, the one on the on the bottom with the index zero and this point will be the origin of yz plane once we take the plane i'm going to mirror so I will use component mirror, this is mirror plane and we are going to mirror the list of circles okay and once we mirror them I want to uh, move the one on the right along z direction by the third uh, size of the of the length of this length and I'm going to take this one I will use move and using the same uh, the same vector that we used to move the interpolated curve I'm going to turn off this one turn on this one all right and once we create the surface using loft component from the first set of um, circles and from the other set of circles you can see that um, the second tower uh, doesn't touch the ground so uh, in order to touch the ground we can take this list of uh, circles and uh, i will extract the one with index zero and i will project them on the on the ground and the ground is where is the bottom point of the of uh, the other surface or of the first tower and we can get this point if we take uh, the surface and using component evaluate box evaluate this one and in w input i will place here in the the point that we get will be origin of x y plane and simply we are going to project uh, the circle with the index zero on the plane that we just generated 
and once again i will use merge so i will merge uh, the list of circles that we move along that direction with the circle that we just uh, get and let's see what we get if we create a surface there is a single problem as we can see here we have on the list of circles so to get the proper order of circles so this projected one should be the first one and after that we should merge uh, the list of circles that we get from the move component and now we get the right result all right once we uh, finally get the position of the second tower we need to create the third one so the position of the third tower we can get once we take the list of circles and rotate them along xy plane the origin of xy plane is the origin uh, is the point that we created uh, at the beginning of the script so i will take this point and i will create xy plane i will use uh, hidden wire display placing the p and the angle will be 60 degrees because on in top view we will get a triangle with equal segments so I will place 60 in the a but don't forget to set uh, degrees and in one of the last steps uh, once we find the position of the third uh, tower we need to move them along a z direction and the amplitude will be the same that we used here so the amplitude will be the third of the length segment and the same uh, problem that we uh, had previously because this tower doesn't touch the ground once again we'll take the circle with the uh, index zero and we're going to project on the same plane that we projected the previous one okay and now the same logic we're going to merge the circle that we get with the circles that we get from the rotation and if we create the surface with a loft we should get the final result all right so here we have the first tower here we have the second one and here we have the third one that we get from the rotation so if you want to change once again the number of segments we can do it here if we want to have the number of uh, uh, divisions along each segment we can do it with this slider also if you want to change the uh, minimum radius value and maximum radius value we can change it here or if you want to have bigger extension on the top and on the bottom we can change with this slider this one is fixed so if we zoom in uh, we can get that uh, as a result of the intersection of these towers we only get the points for all of you who would like to go a step further we created an extended tutorial in which you will learn how to create surface openings to get a rhythmic effect following the shape logic. In this process, we'll get the vectors first that will be used to generate point attractors. Based on their position, the size of the openings will be created. This you can watch on our Patreon page and support our work at the same time. With that, you will also get access to all our extended tutorials and product files. Before I wrap this video up, I would like to share something with you. If you are in architecture and you're interested in learning more about Rhino and Grasshopper, but you're tired of searching through thousands of tutorials online and wasting so much time doing that, 
and you're looking for a structured learning approach with one-on-one -on -one support, we created a course called Rhino for Architects that will guide you through all of the basics, both Rhino and Grasshopper. In addition to that, we'll be covering some advanced modeling techniques using subdivision tools for Rhino 7, which will allow you to create any kind of geometrical shape that you match. When it comes to Grasshopper, we'll explain every single essential component with examples and homework files, so even if you're a total beginner, you'll be able to understand the logic and mathematics behind the program. On top of that, we'll teach you all about various plugins for Rhino that are used in architecture, such as V-Ray, Visual Arc, and even Bongo for architectural animation. Lastly, we'll cover architectural presentation, creation of diagrams, and a couple of case study projects. If this sounds like something you would like to check out, feel free to schedule your free Zoom call with us in the first link in the description. On this call, we will evaluate your current skill sets, determine if this course can help you out, and on top of that, we will share our learning platform with you so you can get a better idea how all of that looks on the inside. Click on the link below the video and we'll talk soon. Take care. Thank you.